Anchor reached out to me and asked me to do a comparison between their 11-in-1 and their 8-in-1 USB Type-C power delivery hub that can be used with Apple M1 computers. Let's have a look. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. I have been a longtime Anchor product user, and if you're unfamiliar with them, Anchor is an accessory manufacturer. Now, when they reached out to me and asked me to do a comparison between their two USB Type-C hub that has power delivery, I say, yeah, let's have a look at them. So they made these hub, and these hub, I think, are a perfect fit for anyone using the new Apple product. For example, the new M1 MacBook Air, M1 MacBook Pro, and this would also apply to the iPad Pro as well, because it does have USB Type-C and Thunderbolt on there now. Both of these devices come with a little manual out of the box and also pouches to hold them together in place. And between the two of them, the construction for both of these are still plastic, but I mean, they will last a long time. Will they get scratched? Yes, absolutely. The one thing I like more about the 11-in-1 is that the cable itself is a braided cable and I feel like these braided cables tend to last much longer against tug and pull and just pretty much more durable over time. And this other one, the 8-in-1 has a pretty much a plastic cable here, but that's the main difference between the two. And yes, the 11-in-1 does have more ports and we're going to compare these two together. But before we have a look at the ports, I think it's important for us to address a few things first. I think that these are perfect accessories for you to use with a new Apple M1 portable devices because there are limited ports on these machines and you can only link up so many devices to the machine at any given time where I think that these USB Type-C hub will expand the usability of the machine by quite a bit. And the other reason too why I want to take some time away from these hub and look at all the other accessories individually first because I think once we start to add these all in, when we compare it to the hub, it's going to make a lot more sense. One more thing I wanted to mention about the hub is that this Anchor 8-in-1 costs around $80, while the Anchor 11-in-1 costs around $90, so there is a $10 difference between the two. But if we start to take a look at the other accessories as a standalone and add them all up, it's going to make a lot more sense for us to, to get this rather than getting all these individual accessories together and having us carry more dongles. So. Let's have a look at some of the important ones. If you own any of these new USB Type-C machine, it is always a great idea to have a USB Type-C to USB Type-A. This is an Apple original one and this one costs $19. So it is quite a bit of a cost there. You can certainly find Anchor brand product ones or any other brands out there. They make them on Amazon. You can generally get two for six to $12, depending on the brand. There's also the inline type as well. So example, you have the USB type C here and the other one is the USB type A. You can get these adapters, generally two of them for about like six bucks or so. And I have a few of the anchor ones inside my studio too that I always have laying around just so that I can use. And if you ever want to link up these computers, these new MacBook Air or MacBook Pro with the M1 processor to an external display, you're either going to get a display cable that has USB Type-C on one end and the other end is an HDMI display port or whatever port you have on the other end, or you can always get an adapter. The nice thing about having this adapter, the one from Apple, is that it can output 4K60, so that's a guarantee, and especially if you get the latest model one. And the other thing about these adapters is that you have two additional ports. So you have the USB Type-A port and you also have the power in so you can charge your laptop at the same time while it's driving an external display. It's a great thing to have there, but this adapter costs $69 from Apple already. And if you should need hardwire internet access, for example, you need a Ethernet connection, well, this USB Type-C to Ethernet connection generally runs between $9 to $12 on Amazon or so. But the thing is this, if you plug this into your machine, you only have one USB Type-C port left, so you're are limiting the number of ports and what you can do on your machine fairly quickly. And if we add all the costs of these accessories up, well, pretty much they are about the price of this 8-in-1 already. And if you spend just $10 more, you can get this 11-in-1. So beyond just the comparison between these two about the cable differences, let's talk about some of the ports that they have that are pretty much similar to each other. So both of these have Ethernet connection and Here's the thing, when it comes to Ethernet connection, whether you're tech savvy or not, I always recommend any of my clients at least get one of those dongles because 
You never know when you're going to show up into a situation that doesn't have Wi-Fi or you want to transfer a file on a network really quickly, faster than Wi-Fi. Having these Ethernet connection is definitely a useful tool to have in your arsenal, whether you will be using it or not. It's always a great backup plan to have one of these because you can tap into faster internet access using these ports. Now, the other thing that these two adapters have in common is a SD and micro SD card reader on the side there. So if you're a content creator, this is perfect for that. And it also has HDMI on both of these devices and the HDMI can do 4K 60 out without any issues. So you start to see already that these hubs are going to come in really handy when you want to try to use your computer and you just need to plug one thing in and you can link multiple accessories to these. In addition, these hub will also do power delivery, meaning that you can just plug in the USB-C from your power adapter right into these hub on these two ports and they will be able to take power up to 100 watts and they'll be able to distribute 85 watts of power to your system. So if you're running on the M1 computers, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro or the iPad, you're going to be perfectly fine on there. I mean, 85 watts, it, the power adapter that comes with these computers are much less than that. But you may ask, so what happens if I have a more powerful MacBook Pro, like the 16 inch one that comes with the 85 or the 96 watt power adapter? Well, you can still use a 96 watt power adapter with it, but this hub will only output 85 watt of power to your computer, which is still more than enough to run your machine, sustain, and even just doing a lot of creative tasks and exporting for a very long time, it will be just fine just to do that. Beyond that, you still have a few more ports here. So you have USB Type-C on the 8-in-1 here, and we're going to separate these out a little bit. This is a 10 gigabit per second USB Type-C connection. And on here, you have 10 gigabit per second USB Type-A. And because these two lines are linked, I believe that they are split in half. So you can only run technically 5 megabits per second on these two ports here. And that's pretty much the 8-in-1 connector right there. When we move over to the 11 in 1, we get a few more benefits to that. So we have a 5 gigabit per second USB Type C, a 5 gigabit per second USB Type A, and we also have two USB 2.0 ports that are Type A, and you can link up your mouse, keyboard, or any other low power accessories to this. For instance, if you have a speaker that uses USB Type C, generally you can just use one of these ports and be able to output the sound to the speaker by USB without any issues whatsoever. And the last thing that this thing has, or the last two things that this 11-in-1 has that it also comes with a display port. This is a full display port connection. And if you're in the creative world, you're using a pro display, in general, my recommendation is to use display port whenever you can because display port guarantees that you're not going to get a compressed signal output compared to the HDMI. Now, I've run extensive tests on the HDMI output on these MacBook Air, MacBook Pro with M1 processors, and they do output a full range, so you can do the calibration on both hardware and software calibrate display without any issues. But in general, if you just want to avoid any of those problems altogether, DisplayPort is definitely the way to go. And lastly, this 11-in-1 also comes with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack port. So if you just have an analog speaker that uses these type of connection, you can just use this one singular hub to do everything for you. Now you may ask that on these MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, it does also have on the opposite side of it, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. That is true. However, if you really think about this, you have one of these hub, you leave it at your office or you leave it at your home office and you just come back to it. You just plug one singular cable in, it will charge your device. It will link it up to an external display, link up to all your accessories, including your speaker just by plugging this one in instead of having to plug two or three cables into your machine. I think this is a really useful device. Personally, if you ask me for any creative pros, I would probably recommend that you get the 11 in one. And I would even think that if your workflow is predominantly on these M1 computers, and this is the only computer you have right now to do everything in your creative workflow, well, my recommendation would be to probably get maybe two of these. So you can leave one at your home office or your studio, wherever that may be, so that when you arrive there, it's just one single cable that plugs into your machine and you're ready to go. The other one, put it in your backpack, take it with you on the road so that if you ever go on site, you have the capability to link up to all these other devices without any limitation whatsoever. And there's one more story I like to share about having an ethernet connection, whether you think you're gonna use it or not. 
So I was doing a demonstration at a trade show and we need to transfer the file between one computer to the next to do some printing on site. Well, Wi-Fi is absolutely terrible in a trade show. Trying to do ad hoc connection is just not going to work. So what we end up doing was using a Ethernet cable and just literally hardwiring our computer. Therefore, we have a much higher transfer speed and also a reliable connection. And I was so happy that between me and my colleague, we both carry a USB Type-C to Ethernet dongle with us. And if we have a look at the amount of dongles that I have on the table right now, this is a very small amount compared to what I normally carry out when I go on a photo shoot or when I go to meeting, conferences, trade show, whatever that may be. But now what I can do is simply just take out one of these devices with me and I can have majority of ports that I need without having to worry, do I have a Ethernet to USB or not? Do I have a HDMI port or HDMI output dongle on my computer or not? This will pretty much do everything that I need. So it is a really good device to have there. And this is something that's good to have in your bag, whether you're a pro or not. The best thing to do, I would probably recommend to look at the equipment that you have and the type of connection that you will use and assess which one of these will help you accomplish your tasks that you try to do, whether you're at your office or when you're on the road. I hope that you find this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new. And until next time, in art we trust.